Today is Thursday, the 16th week in Ordinary Time. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 844, God is Here. Number 844, God is Here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. A priest is invited to talk to the religious education class. And he walks into the room, and he asks one of the students, tell me, what is faith? And the student, not skipping a beat, says, faith? is believing things you know are not true. How many people probably find themselves in that situation, struggling to try to believe things? But faith is also a gift from God. And we can ask God, Lord, strengthen our faith. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your command. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Exodus. In the third month after their departure from the land of Egypt, on its first day, the children of Israel came to the desert of Sinai. After the journey from Rephidim to the desert of Sinai, they pitched camp. When Israel was encamped there in front of the mountain, the Lord told Moses, I am coming to you in a dense cloud so that when the people hear me speaking with you, they may always have faith in you also. When Moses then had reported to the Lord the response of the people, the Lord added, go to the people and have them sanctify themselves today and tomorrow. Make them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. On the morning of the third day, there were peals of thunder and lightning and a heavy cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. But Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God and they stationed themselves at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was all wrapped in smoke for the Lord came down upon it in fire. The smoke rose from it as though from a furnace and the whole mountain trembled violently. The trumpet blast grew louder and louder while Moses was speaking and God answering him with thunder. When the Lord came down to the top of Mount Sinai, he summoned Moses to the top of the mountain. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory. Praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to the crowd in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you. Many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Perhaps you have found yourself in a situation, I'm pretty sure you have. You go to the doctor, and the doctor recommends that you get more exercise. And so you know what you do? You go like this, yes, doctor. But inside, <laughs> right? But you realize, you know something? He's going to ask later on, I better do this. And you realize, you know, it's hot, it's hot, hot outside, <laughs> you know? And you know that you should be walking, because that's a recommended exercise, you know? It's a low impact, and it, it's effective. So you decide, in your clever mind, you decide to go to Walmart or Costco, because they are big stores, and you can walk around there. And not only that, they're air-conditioned. Perfect solution, right? So actually works out pretty well even though you feel a little guilty because you know that actually you're supposed to be shopping. You're supposed to be buying something. And then you start realizing, you know, there's cameras all over here. It might be following me, you know? So to avoid suspicion, one day you decide to actually buy something. So you buy some ingredients to make bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. You're gonna make BLTs for your friends for lunch. And so the sandwiches, actually, unknown to you at the time, have a deeper significance that you hadn't even considered. When we look at today's first reading, it reports what is called a theophany. A theophany. That is, an appearance of God. And God appears to Moses and the people on Mount Sinai. And they are given specific instructions beforehand. The Lord tells Moses, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be up on the mountain. I'm going to descend in a cloud. You tell the people to sanctify themselves and to wash their clothes. They need to make preparations. And there's some other things there. But they are also told not to touch the base of the mountain or to go up on it because they will die. And you're saying, well, okay, Father, I don't remember that being in the reading. Well, somehow they cut that part out, okay? Maybe because, I don't know why they cut it out. But it does say that if a person touches the base of the mountain or goes up on it, they're going to die. And that 
the other people are told that if somebody should do something like that, you should not touch them. Don't touch them with your hands, but they should be killed by arrows or by stones. Wow, that's pretty strong. Do you know, once upon a time, it was unheard of for lay people to enter the sanctuary of the church. It just didn't happen. Not only that, but a person was not allowed to touch the priest's chalice. You just didn't do it. This is the idea of something being sacred. The word sanctus in Latin means to cut off. Right? So when a country does something that they're not supposed to do, normally the community levels sanctions against them. They cut them off. See, sanctus, they cut them off. And so there are holy things that are set apart. There are regular everyday things called mundane, meaning worldly, but then there are those things that are set apart. They're cut off for special use, primarily for God. And the word sanctus, translated in German, is heilige. And so heilige comes into English as holy. So holy things, holy people, the holy nation, there's the world and then there's the holy nation, right? There's the church and then there's the sanctuary, you see? And so think of it like this. St. Paul says, and this is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. St. Paul says that whoever eats the bread of the Eucharist or drinks of the cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. A person, he says, a person should examine himself because receiving communion in an unworthy manner, a person eats and drinks judgment on himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And then he concludes, he says that for this reason, many people are weak and sick, and some have even died. Because the Eucharist is holy. The Eucharist is sancto, sanctus. It is set apart, it's something different. The holy mountain is something different. God is something different, it's not Hey, God, all the time. God is holy, set apart. They say that familiarity breeds contempt. But I think in religious matters, familiarity often breeds indifference. And as I've said before, and it usually, I wish I could say these things at the end of the Mass, but it always puzzles me how a person can come off of the street, enter a church, having missed most of the Mass and still will come up for communion. It's almost as if they've never heard this from St. Paul. And you know, we have a saying, another saying, is nothing sacred? Well, these days it seems that that's actually the case. Nothing is sacred, nothing is off limits, nothing is different. Everything is everything and everybody can have everything and that's it. And this lack of attention to sacred things, I believe, is one of the chief causes of our demise as a religious community and as a nation, that we have to make that distinction. There are some things that are just set apart. I don't know, once upon a time, to meet the president or to meet the mayor was a big deal. I mean, you were terrified, just the idea that you would meet this person, or even to meet Mother Superior in a convent, right? You, would, you know, because Mother Superior set apart. She's a different kind, she's a holy person. But nowadays, everything is the same. But even the priest cannot tell people no. And I wonder, holy things, who even keeps the Sabbath sacred these days? Isn't it just another day? But the pre I can't say anything. I, well, I can say it, but people don't pay any attention. And like I said, people will come in, miss most of the Mass, 
and still receive communion. And I, I'm, in a, I'm in a bind, right? Because I'm giving them communion, but am I not in a way complicit with what's going on? But God forbid I should say no, and then you know, I'm a horrible bad person. The priest must always give people what they want. All right. Jesus says that even when people are told, you just heard this in the gospel, that even when people are told, they don't listen, and when showed, they don't even see. And this Jesus, who was Savior of the world, he tried his best to guide us to the kingdom, but he keeps getting crucified over and over again. We don't want to hear it. However, the offer is still valid. That's why it's called good news, right? It's still valid. God is still calling us to himself. God is still calling us, men and women, to be a holy nation, to be a royal priesthood, to be a people set apart for the service of the Most High God. Jesus is still offering the secrets the mysteries of the kingdom of God to those who are willing to hear, to those who are willing to see. But in order to hear and see, we must seek it. We must seek the kingdom of God above all things. And as you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Or in Espanol se dice, busca primeramente el reino de Dios. Primeramente, the first thing, priority. We must seek it. And the church, as you know, can be used for a whole host of things. But what is primarily the purpose of the church is to bring people to salvation in God's kingdom. How will we seek the kingdom of God? And I tell you, brothers and sisters, maybe you're like me and you don't even eat pork, but we today will make a BLT. We are being advised today, everybody make a daily BLT. We will believe, B, what God says. We will, L, love God with all our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and our neighbors as ourselves. And T, we will trust that God will reveal the kingdom to those who ask him. Believe, love, and trust. BLT, the perfect combo for salvation. Let us stand to pray. In faith and confidence in God's care, we present our prayers to him. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, may the Lord bless the church with committed men and women. Let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may the Lord grant them every grace in addressing the many challenges their people face. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who struggle with trials or crises of faith, may God assure them that he is their sure hope and source of all blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us here today, both present and virtual, may the Lord continue to bless us and guide us in every word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Shariah Karnati, for whom this Mass is offered, may God welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven to live in his presence forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, you entrust these prayer, we entrust these prayers to you with humble hearts. We ask that you answer them according to your holy and loving will through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is number 920, Life-Giving Bread, Saving Cup. Number 920, Life-Giving Bread, Saving Cup, verse 3. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God, and have a most blessed day. Thank you. The closing hymn is number 848, As We Gather at Your Table. Number 848, As We Gather at Your Table, verse 3. Three.
gracious spirit.